Hello, yes, fighting elections, the nationalist super weapon. That's right. Remember when Derek Beacon won the BMP's first uh, council seat in the Isle of Dogs, 1993? Remember the publicity surrounding that? In fact, it made world news. Sadly, the BMP couldn't keep the momentum going. And the emergence of Combat 18, created by Searchlight Jerry Gable, derailed the BMP and stopped any further council wins. Then we moved to the early 2000s, when the BMP was riding high. Walter Chamberlain was beaten up and older by Asian racists. And uh, it was made public that Glodick, uh, Asian enclave in Oldham, had right on the wall or signs up saying no whites allowed. Griffin then appeared on the Jeremy Paxman show and he wiped the floor with him. The powers that be and our enemies, says La Magazine, Jerry Gable and Nicholas, they could see the writing on the wall that the BMP was going somewhere, especially in Oldham. So they brought in Darren Wells to start the Oldham riots and that derailed the BMP in Oldham. But all, all the same, all the same. Um, but the BMP continued to have uh, electoral victories and council wins in Burnley, Blackburn, Halifax, and our enemies were truly in a panic. They literally were. And remember the publicity we got from those council wins. It was priceless. Whereas now, what's happening? No one's standing in elections. The enemy, or our enemy, should I say, Nick Lowe's, hope not, hey, Jerry Gable, say the magazine and the big boys, they're my five. They'd rather you march up and down the high street with the Football Lads Alliance. Controlling the anger and then marching it into Witherspoons. Out of Witherspoons on the train, then home. Or march with Tommy Robinson and unite against hate or extremists or whatever. Right? Or e e even just as sad as a post on Facebook, press like, share, comment, regurgitate the same articles and worship cult figures like Whitefire 66 and read his articles, achieving nothing. So they've taken us away from electoral politics and they've filled the void with nonsense or chopping down the high street with the uh, Football Lads Alliance and made you believe they've got another march the 7th of October is it? they're expecting something like 20,000 people if not more a lot of people have said why has, has the press ignored the Football Lads Alliance well there's two reasons I can think of it's to make you believe they fear it which empowers you and also by not attacking it and calling it racist or neo-nazi it, it legitimises it doesn't it people then can say to their family friends we're colleagues, friends, oh no, 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 it, it, it's not racist, you know, it's against all extremists, probably including us as well. So that's why they haven't attacked it. By not attacking it, it legitimises it, right? It's liked and okay then, and people, as you know, it's liked and okay and not attacked and told it's evil and nasty. They'll go along with it. Once the press turns on it, then you will see the numbers deteriorate overnight. But I don't believe they will yet. There's no reason to, they'll... Let it grow momentum, let it go strong, let it get bigger and bigger and then bingo, we can we know what's going to happen. But anyway, so the state's taken us away from electoral politics, the nationalist super weapon, which was winning elections, council seats, right? They've taken us away from it to post on Facebook, press like, share, comment, regurgitate the same articles. Everyone else does. Dick Griffin does it. He regurgitates the same articles. Then all they'll post articles by cult figures like Whitefire 66. Everyone will read it, his or his, whoever it is. Articles, they'll be like sort of, they'll develop God status, which they're, they're already doing, where everyone can't wait for the, the next Whitefire 66 article, which is achieving nothing. What are his articles about? Nothing. You couldn't go into work of a Monday morning telling your work colleagues, hey Bill, read a great article there. Saturday nights on Facebook, who's that by Joe? Whitefire 66, Bill. Oh, I. They think you're hanging around and associating with weirdos and crackpots. Whitefire 66, well, exactly. And our enemies love all this. I'm not saying they're behind it, I'm saying they love it, if they're not. They love all this cult nonsense and cult figures and cultism and nonsense and rubbish. They love it. They love you marching up and down the high street with the Football Lads Alliance, marching to Witherspoons. Have a few pints, control the anger. Back on your train and home and achieving nothing. Do you really believe?
football lads are lying to anyone else for that matter. The government's going to sit up listening to anyone marching on the street shouting, Hey, do you really believe that? They've got to take notice now. We've shown them there's 20,000, there was a million marched on the streets against the Iraq war. Did it stop there going into Iraq? No. It's a load of nonsense, right? But anyway, anyway, that's where our enemies have taken us now. Or Nick Griffin, just uh, listening to one of his speeches he made in Hungary last year, was it, whenever, talking about War of the Cradle. Got to have more kids. How many was at the meeting, Nick? 30, 50, 100, telling them to have more kids. I'm sure that will address the balance of the uh, third world baby boom. I'm sure it will. You see, this is something else we're doing as well. Even, even if we could convince the millennials to find a traditional wife, traditional husband, have a traditional family, loads of kids, it's still too late in the day to use it as a strategy or a weapon to defeat third world immigration and third world uh, the third world baby boom, it's too late in the day. Listen, by all means have more white people, of course. But to use it as a strategy and a weapon, it's a load of nonsense, it's too late. And telling the millennials they've got to find a traditional wife, uh, millenn millennial woes style. If you've got one yet, millennial woes, well exactly no. Or you've got to have a, a traditional husband, lead a traditional way of life. Again, we're just alienating these people. And like I've said, even if you could convince the millennials not to watch reality tv soaps and get shit faced over weekend have more children you still couldn't address what's happening it's too late in the day i don't care if they've got a traditional wife traditional husband or none as long as they vote for us that's all that matters that's all we have to do is get our people to vote for us but we're putting hurdles in front of us aren't we well the enemy is the enemy the hurdle is like marching with the football lads the lions because you're not reaching the people. You're just letting anger off on the street. Into, that's going nowhere. And then into Witherspoons. Same with Tommy Robinson, same with Paul Golding. Or post like, share, comments and all that. That's just letting off a bit of steam. Or read the cult uh, articles by cult figures such as White Fire 66. Again, achieving nothing. And this is what this is where our enemies, are, 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 you know, they put us. And this is where they like us. The latest nonsense and baloney is the identitarians of the Starship Enterprise sailing around the Mediterranean again, trying to stop something that is just impossible. It's not logistically possible. That's where they want us, wasting time, effort, money, man hours, sailing around the Mediterranean like Captain Bugwash, right? Or march up and down the high street with a football lads alliance or joining Paul Golding bursting into Moscow or Tommy Robinson and his reality TV show or whatever. You must be able to see what's happening. I've just been driving around Kenya, eh, sorry Kensington in Liverpool where I'm going to stand next year 2018 council elections and it truly is an awful place. It's dreadful. Those responsible for what's happened to Kensington. Need bring him before the courts in jailing. In fact, I've done so much driving around there, right? So much driving around, that I know what streets not to even put a leaflet through, let alone knock on the door. Just wasting your time. They're, they're being colonized, they're housing multiple occupancy. There's God knows how many third welders just in one room, one house, whatever. They've, they've got like, you see in Kensington, some of the uh, properties are like uh, two, three stories, so the, there's God knows how many rooms are in them, and they're, they're filled, each room's filled with a different family. It really is terrible, it's shocking. I'm going to do quite well there, and it's going to be the launch of the new political party. I've been speaking to people again, and it's coming along, trust me, it is, it is. It's coming along, it'll be formed hopefully this year, and I'll be ready for um, next year's uh, council elections in May in Kenya, uh, sorry Kensington I will do well there, I will get tons of publicity because I've got a good campaign and a good campaign team as well so we have to get back and use the nationalist super weapon which is fighting elections not post, like, share, comment on Facebook and regurgitate and read articles by cult figures like Whitefire66 Hail Whitefire! I'm exaggerating to make me point, you know what I mean? Because these are just cult figures now, right? Our enemies love, assuming it's not the enemy, I don't know. I don't know who it is, so we don't know. Did anyone ever find out who the maid of Ken was? Was it a he or a she or whatever? But does it matter? I don't really, it, it doesn't matter, no, it doesn't matter who Whitefire 66 is. What a silly name. But this is what's happening. Imagine people looking in from the outside. Whitefire 66, the maid of Kent. 
nationalist cadres defending the communities and war of the cradle. War of the cradle, do you realise how stupid that's a and to add insult to injury, the identitarians of the Starship Enterprise? I mean, come on, you just must be able to, uh, you Nick Griffin, right? You've got amazing abilities and potential, but the enemy's tying you up where it wants you. It wants you with Jackson on British Resistance, or whatever it is, radio station, blaring out nonsense to who? Who's that to? It's not to the bubbly. Who's it to? What do they do after listening to that knowledge? Can they act upon it? Can they use it to do what? Well, exactly nothing. We use social media in all its forms to promote our candidates where, wherever they're standing in and around Britain. That's what we do. We use it. Like pushing local issues for local people, championing their causes, addressing their fears, issues and tragedies of a day. Not in-depth articles by Whitefire 66 that have no meaning or relevance in the real world, or especially in the world of politics, uh, or, and in particular, electoral politics, right? But this is where our enemies have taken us, right? Captain Pugwash on the high seas, the identitarians, marching with the Football Lads Alliance into Witherspoon, a few scoops, control the anger back on the train and home. And also with Tommy Robinson and Paul Golding and then sadly, and it is sad, listening to Nick Griffin on Jack Sen's British Resistance Radio, is it all, talking in Jack Sen's home about uh, training and going to the gym and, I mean there was a video I watched with Jack Sen last year sometime but he's calling people fat bastards, see I don't care what your weight is. What your physical ability is, how many press ups you can do, whether or not you've got a traditional wife or a traditional husband, I just want your vote, and that's what we have to do. But our enemies are putting hurdles in front of us and deliberately alienating the good people we need. Okay, thank you.